Good morning, y'all. I know you're so confused and you're like, Sherry, it's Friday. You don't do shows on Friday. I do when I missed a couple of days because I had a little bit of surgery. Actually, I had a chunk of surgery and I'm not showing y'all all those pictures, but I got to give a shout out to my amazing doctor. My friend Dan Poole, who is the editor of the Pickens Progress for how many years have you been there now? Uh, 25 or so. 25 or so years. I have followed that progress forever and um, I loved it and today I found some articles my mom who actually passed from the same cancer that I was diagnosed with wrote for the Sassafras Writing Club mm -hmm. was that the name of it? Literary Society. And, and the progress often had stories about that and I found a little story about that and it was in 19 <laughs> let's see <laughs> no it was in 2000 it was actually in 2001, and it's always local news. And so the local news this week has been about me and what's going on. So I said, how better <laughs> could we handle it than to just come and tell y'all? I got a biopsy done. I had um, same cancer that got my mother, but I am not going to be gotten by this cancer. I'm going to take care of it, and I'm going to be healthy, wealthy, and wise because I have a team of amazing doctors but I want to tell you how important it is. And I was sharing with Dan, you know, maybe weekly, somebody needs to do articles about preventive medicine. Check your skin, check your body, get checkups. Because the doctors that I've been dealing with said, we have seen a 20 year old with a tiny, tiny spot who didn't make it. We have seen a 42 year old that had they not caught it in a year, it would have taken them down. I've been watching the place on my arm for about seven years and they kept saying if it changes, if it changes, if it changes. It changed just like this and when it changed it was time to rock and roll and we were rocking and rolling and I was rocking and rolling with some really good surgeons and I had one on this side sewing up this incision, one on this side sewing up this one and I just all went well, all went well. Your prayers made a difference. So thank you to everyone. And this morning people have been calling and they're like, are you okay, are you coming back? And to my buddies who said, uh, Dwight did a good job, but he can't replace you. I agree, <laughs> <laughs> I agree, so I love him, but I can't, he can't replace me. But thank you, thank you for your calls, thank you for your concern, thank you for your prayers. Now, today is going to be a day to celebrate, and I want to show photos of my doctor because I want to encourage each and every one of you. This is the second time he's operated on me. The first time was on my face. He didn't even leave a scar. He's amazing. He's amazing, but this one, he apologized. He had to go really deep. It was really tough, and it took a lot to put me back together, but I'm sliced, diced, chopped, smothered, and covered. Now, that's the crazy man that I let take my place for a day, <laughs> and he'll be back, but <laughs> it was so funny. I said, what am I going to do? And I just picked up a phone call and said, Dwight, can you do this? He said, sure, I can. So, so thank you to everybody who stood in and, and made a difference for me. And there's my team, and precious, precious, precious. I absolutely love my doctor. He is such a kind, good guy, and uh, they laughed at me. I'm the only person in history that ever got to go in for surgery with makeup on, and I said, listen, <laughs> buddy, I don't go anywhere without makeup, and they just cracked up laughing. I said, no, makeup and jewelry, got to have it. So, so they just made fun of me, but I had to hold this paddle because as they were cauterizing my skin and trying to stop the bleeding, which was pretty, pretty bad, um, it kept zapping me and I said I kind of felt like I, it was weird and I thought maybe I should have taken off my jewelry because I'm going to get zapped again but but thank you to Dr. Freeman and his staff thank you thank you thank you they they Good got morning, my biopsy Mary. on Monday they had me in surgery Good on morning. Tuesday they had me back in surgery on Wednesday y'all think about that that is God that is a miracle that is something that you can't get to a doctor that fast they got to call the insurance company. They got to call the government. They got to call the Chinese mafia. They got to call so many people to get stuff done. They didn't have to. It all came in play. So thank you to each and every one of you. Now today is going to be about um, progress. Progress. And there's some progress in Jasper, Dan Pool, because downtown Jasper looks very different than it did how many years ago? Maybe five years have we started yeah, seeing the change? Yeah, it's been five. It's yeah. been the 
revitalization got underway. Yep, yep. and say. Jasper is doing wonderful, and there's going to be an art walk next Friday night, I believe mm -hmm. that's right. And this is something we want to welcome you to come to downtown Jasper and get to know, number one, the historical towns. Number two, the amazing reconstruction and revisiting, but maintaining the old structure. And that's what I really, really love about it. Now, the old structure, the building that the Progress is in, tell me about the structure of that building, the age. Um, I, I hate to say, I'm not exactly sure when it was built. We had... Um, uh, it was known, it's always been known as the Edge Building. building. Edge Building. At least as long as I know. Mm -hmm. um, it was built sometime before 1920. There mm -hmm. is a uh, marble capstone at the top that mm -hmm. I believe says 1924. Wow. But I believe the building might be That's a little older. That's older than me. That's uh, older than it, me. It is back there a while. <laughs> yeah. It burned once at least in the 40s mm -hmm. and then was rebuilt. Mm -hmm. And so we've been, it's been there a long time. Um, I, unfortunately, the history before 1920, I do not have it. Um, it's, um, I was going to ask you, what's the oldest archive you have for the progress? Well, we don't have anything before 1940. There, oddly enough, if you go to YouTube and search Edge Building Fire, mm -hmm. there's somebody, um, I one, like of the, that. one of the Mr. Van Sant, um, uh -huh. who still got send us in the community shot uh -huh. a video that shows them going through the, like the rubble of the edge oh building. So gosh. you can go to YouTube and see that. So that we don't awesome. have anything before 1940. Mm -hmm. um, it, everything was um, burned. burned. And wow. rumor had it, I mean, this was pure rumor back uh -huh. from the time it's been passed down, that in the upstairs was the draft office because World War II was underway. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. people, somebody, I had heard that in the someone past. Someone had yes. st wanted yeah. to steal the ration tickets. And so they stole wow. the ration tickets and then burned the, entire, the then burned the entire building yeah. to cover the crime. Yeah. But I don't know if that is necessarily true. Probably. Um, it seems like in the <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it sounds real it to me. <laughs> could be in the 1940s with, you know, it could have been other things. Yeah. But uh, that was the rumor. So it burned then. So we don't really have, like, people like, oh, you have the old archive. We wow. have some that people have brought us. Mm -hmm. Also, um, newspapers, like a lot of people will save a newspaper and they will put it in the bottom of a drawer <laughs> or they will clip it out. Guilty as And they charged. hold up pretty well then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but they don't generally hold up well in stacks or if they're not taken care of. So mm -hmm. we have some that people have brought that go back before the, and as long as we're on the subject, the Progress, um, the Edge family, which is what, where I come through, that was my mom's family. Right. The, they first acquired the Progress Inn, and I wrote this down, 1906. Y'all so, think about that. And that would have been uh, four generations ago for me. Yeah. So we have had uh, four generations of Edge family owners. Um, and that was, it's kind of an interesting story. That would have been Claude Elf Edge, who had worked in publishing, but really more on the printing side, like mm -hmm. typesetting. Mm -hmm. but not that, a writer. Not a writer. He mm -hmm. was, he actually, one of the things he did was the uh, train schedules for all the trains in Atlanta, because they had to put out fresh, you know, oh, schedules. Yeah. interesting. And it was lots of little bitty, uh, like line, uh, you know, type work, mm -hmm. typesetting. Mm -hmm. And he had done that, and he, in later years, that was stressful. He retired, and he mm -hmm. came to Jasper. And at that point, there had been a paper prior to that called The Mountain Boys, mm -hmm. but it was not being published with any regularity. When he showed up in 1906, mm -hmm. they came to him and said, would you like to um, take over the paper? He said, well, I will, but I need my, both my two sons to work there. Mm -hmm. And the two sons being? Robert Edge mm -hmm. um, and Claude Edge. Wow. And that they were... Um, 14 and 12 at the time. Oh, I love so it. So they oh essentially, gosh. either around school or in between, they, yeah. they started putting out a newspaper. Yeah. And, and then they both did it their entire lives. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the next generation would be my mom, and then she had married my father, and they both put out the paper. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Then I've had Who a, chose the name Progress? It would have been back in the 1906, yeah. I assume. It may have already been some scattered issues of mm -hmm. Progress Mountain Boy. It was... Um, there is not a good detailed history of newspapers in Pickens County mm -hmm. prior to 1900. You can find issues of Mountain Boys. There may have been some out called the Progress also. Wow. That's interesting just to know that it, I always thought it was the Progress, but, but how cool is that? 1900, 1900, 
That's a long time That ago. is a long time ago. That's a long time ago. It is. Well, we want to take a commercial break, and we want to remind you before we do, we're going to do a commercial, and we're going to do a song by Dwight because he came in and sat in for me. i got to give him a little bit of air time, so we're going to do that. But I want to remind you again, and when we come back, we're going to talk full-blown history of the progress, the good days, the bad days, the sad days in histories, and the day that we need to say we don't ever want to not have a local paper. We want to maintain because, y'all, the local paper is a fact checker. Facebook's not, and that's all I'm going to say. Now, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about this. This, again, is May the 19th, 6 to 9 p.m. in downtown Jasper. I hope that you will become a part of this and enjoy every single minute of the evening in Jasper. We'll be back shortly. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ball Ground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third-generation race car driver, and we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea, or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. We're back. History. The history of the world. Now, Dan, I asked you before we went on the air, is there a day in American history in your lifetime that you remember the headline, we've got to nail it, we've got to get it right, this is something that people will never forget. What day do you think that was? Um, I don't know that we were necessarily covering it at the progress level other than how it affected Jasper. But mm -hmm. I, I would probably say in my lifetime it was 9-11. 9-11, uh, yeah. Because that just changed everything. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is a paper, I don't even know where this came from. Syracuse, New York. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorist. And that was the headline. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and that will grab your attention. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorist. And it, I remember, I'm getting cold chills, but I was sitting at my desk. I just left home gone to the office, 
I reach down, pick up the phone, it's JS, and I'm thinking, I just left you. Why are you calling me? And he called and said, do you have your TV on? And I said, no, I just walked in the door. So I picked up the remote, flipped my TV on, turned around to look at from my desk, and the second plane was hitting. Do you remember how you felt that day? Where were you and what was going on with uh, you? Uh, I can remember very well. I was... Um, I like to make the joke, if you stay around Jasper long enough, sooner or later you get to be president of the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or the board, chair of the board of directors. I can't remember the title yeah, they use. And yeah. I, that was my year. Uh -huh. We were having a meeting wow. of the chamber board, and one of the secretaries came in, so just want to let you all know that it looks like there's been an attack in New York. There was a little discussion. We want to cancel the meeting. And it's like, well, I don't think there's anything that we right. need to urgently do here. But exactly. let's, we will wrap this up as quickly as we, we can. And so we did. But, yeah. And one thing I'd also like to point out like with the newspapers, did the progress, we did not cover the attacks. We're not in New York. It's not in our region mm -hmm. to cover. Mm -hmm. But if there was anything local, and I don't remember right off anything that jumped people out. People who may have lived people there People who or were there. Like or, yeah, absolutely. Right. We were covering that or anybody local affected. Mm -hmm. Another thing I'd like to point out, like you picked up a newspaper to show what happened. Mm -hmm. I think one of the great things about, you know, newspaper and particularly print newspaper is all the newspaper in America, we printed copies of the news that was reported that day as it mm -hmm. happened that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as we do every day on everything. Um, and one of the great powers of the, like the printed paper mm -hmm. is it then becomes very hard in a few years. Like, well, that wasn't exactly what, you know, if somebody wants to start saying that wasn't exactly what happened mm -hmm. or really this might. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, no. You know, you can look at every newspaper in America, mm -hmm. and I mean, we're not all wrong. I mean, you mm -hmm. may find one that was like, well, that one was a little off, but it preserves something that is, you know, in print that cannot mm -hmm. be later changed right. as opposed to a website or something. Um, That's funny. I was looking at the Chamber of Commerce to hold an annual yep. meeting. You brought in an old paper. And it just happened to be one I grabbed at random when I was walking out of the office and just I to show you how they changed. It, we're saying the word old, and it was when my friend Billy Wofford won the sheriff's race. I don't feel so old, but now that makes yeah. me feel old because well, you know, this, I was driving a 66 Chevelle then, I think. Yeah. So <laughs> is that not cool? Uh, yeah. This was a 1980 that copy of The awesome. Progress. That is so awesome, and, and it just feels so good. Now, do you remember that my father-in-law, Homer Martin, used to do mm -hmm. work for I the do. Progress? That was... He loved, he loved your mom, your dad. He loved everybody at the Progress. He, he was very honored to work there. Yeah, well, excellent. Yeah. yeah, we've had a lot of, a lot of great employees over the years. We don't have a lot of turnover, the same people. Now, one of the other things that the uh, Progress documents is that stores come and go. Ben Franklin came mm -hmm. and went. It did. But the progress is still here, and you gave me a fact that there are lots of newspapers still here. Yeah, in fact, um, there's always like, oh, newspapers are on the decline, they're all going out of business. Um, I'm on the Georgia Press Association board, mm -hmm. and I can tell you that in the last 10, 20 years, we mm -hmm. have had zero legal organ papers shut down. I mean, so there's this perception like, oh, newspapers are closing mm -hmm. all over the place. They're, they're, they're not. I mm -hmm. mean, they're... They are still very healthy legal organ papers, not as big as they once were. I mean, no doubt about that. I wouldn't right. say otherwise, but they're not, you know, you know, the reports of our death are premature greatly. Mm -hmm. So we are 100% still open and function. I have a legal organ paper that serves every county in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty good. You know, we've got 159 counties that that's still have awesome. papers. Um, I'm looking at this and this is, this is so weird. God has a plan. You brought the paper that says Bill Tanner named chairman mm -hmm. of Pickens Heart Fund Drive. Okay, about this time frame, Bill Tanner taught me a real estate course and then he said, I want to hire you because I finished the test just like this. I got my license, da 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 da, the rest is history. But it was so funny because after that, Bill Tanner became a diabetic and lost his leg and mm -hmm. my daddy passed away in florida and i had all of daddy's clothes and i will just say he was a spoiled rotten brat who dressed <laughs> like to the nines and i brought all daddy's clothes and gave them to bill tanner so how cool is it that it, this many years later we pick up a paper that reminds me of how much i loved bill tanner he was a little gruffy he was a little funny and, and i loved he was, him absolutely i loved yeah, him he, he was 
I loved him. He was a great local character. And 100%. and this community book drive, you know, this is what the progress is about. It's about what is happening in our communities. And I love this. There was a hunter safety class that was planned for Jasper. That's so very important. And local yeah. merchants. Now, Dan, let's talk about local merchants. Do local merchants um, today, are they thriving? Are they growing? Does it look, I mean, downtown looks amazing. It does. Um, and I think a lot of them are doing very well. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. it's, I, I, that's, I really cannot, I, I would hate to speak on behalf of the merchants, but I mm -hmm. think Jasper is doing, I think Jasper is doing very well at the moment. And I they've organized, they have a merchants, what's it called, the Merchants Association? They or? have, they've had one for years. Mm -hmm. um, and the Downtown Development Authority is putting on events. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, no, ja I think Jasper's doing very well. I've moment. even made the statement, well, you can't get through downtown Jasper now, it's so crowded. <laughs> it, that is, you know, that has been one of the bigger changes that, yeah. that it is now that it, we've got, you know, parking on the weekends. There are yeah. a lot of people downtown, so. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I noticed, it's really different, and you know this because your office is right across the street. When they took down my little drive through at Jasper Banking mm -hmm. Company, I don't care that it's been t 10 other banks. Yeah. What I care about is they took down my little yeah. drive through We happen to have that. It's on the, and on do the you remember Susan? who, Susan Jones, Susan Ray Jones, who worked there, precious, precious, she died of cancer very young. And, and I always went by there on Friday afternoons and those were the sweetest, sweetest ladies, but they took it down now to mm. give them parking. Is that why they did they, it? Um, they are going to put in downtown bathrooms. Public oh, restrooms awesome, there. that is awesome. So again, the progress covered that. So mm -hmm. that, that's what it's about. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that. I love the idea that all these years, now, do you remember the first time your mom said, Son, you're going to go to work at the Progress now, or did you make a decision after college that it was time? You know, I make this joke all the time. Um, obviously, the Edge family, we're strong believers in nepotism. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I definitely got a job through that. But also, I mean, and maybe this is just luck. Maybe it's like people say newspaper gets into your, to your get ink in your veins. Mm -hmm. But I actually really like my job. I mean, there is, mm -hmm. I, I was looking, I saw where, flipping through some of the older stuff, preparing for this, that my, so it would have been my grandfather and great uncle ran the paper. That would have been Bob and Claude, ran the mm -hmm. paper for many mm -hmm. years. And they put out a letter one year that said, essentially, there's no job we'd rather have and nowhere else we'd rather do it. I rather than put that. out a newspaper in Jasper, Georgia. And, you know, I'm still here. That's, I pretty much would agree with that. So, yeah. I, mean, I, I really, there's not another job I would prefer. Mm -hmm. um, I was never, like, forced to go. I did major in um, journalism at mm -hmm. UGA, Go mm -hmm. Dogs. Um, Yay. Yay. And uh, I've got a daughter right now that's a journalism major at UGA. Mm -hmm. So, it, it definitely gets into your... Um, it gets into your system. You just didn't, it's a very enjoyable job. It's something yeah. different every day of the week. And right. I enjoy it. And then when we talk about, I, I make fun of Facebook a lot because I've been in mm -hmm. Facebook jail so much because of some silly little something you say about a cat or about a, a chigger or about something and they blast you. And it's so silly because they've got fact checking people doing over there in, in India or somewhere. I don't know where they're <laughs> fact checking. But you, you are responsible for what this paper produces. Absolutely. Uh, I think there's, um, I, I personally think there's a little unfairness um, in the way the system works. I'd first point out like a newspaper is primarily facts with one page devoted to opinion, the editorial page, that's where mm -hmm. the opinion is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of what you see on social media is opinion with a little bit of facts stuck in. Very every, little facts. Yeah. yeah. And I'm always amazed we will post stories on our Progress Facebook. It's a pretty active page, mm -hmm. Facebook. Mm -hmm. And there will be people who will look at the headline and immediately start an argument. Start posting about it. And somebody will say, well, did you read the story? It actually did. Oh, well, no, I, I really didn't. No, you know, no. I just, I I just, I just saw the headline. But yeah. I also would point out, like, I think it's somewhat unfair. If we were to put, um, and, and we've, I would like to say in our 130 year history, we've mm -hmm. never had a libel case that um, amounted for me to anything mm -hmm. substantial. Right. Um, but if we did. I can if think we, of one grumbly old man. Oh, I'm not going to name his name, oh, but you know his name. Some, yeah. <laughs> You know, um, they used to whine and complain and bellyache, and it was like, okay, they were at yeah. the meeting, they took notes, it was correct, shut yeah. up. <laughs> but, you know, if we were, I mean, if any newspaper were to libel something, mm -hmm. to put something in there was just completely incorrect, inaccurate, it would be a fairly difficult situation for us in court. To mm -hmm. be but you can put anything you want on Facebook, mm -hmm. and Facebook is not, Facebook itself is not held liable. I think that's right. you know, slightly unfair. We, we, 
maintain a much higher standard. I mean, yep. and you know, yep. there's also, I always point this out, like in a small town newspaper, if we were to write, if we were to eat or any small town paper, just literally just make something up, just mm -hmm. make up a story, mm -hmm. stick mm -hmm. it in there. Right. You know why we couldn't do that? Yeah. Because we'd, so we'd go out to the supermarket and everybody be like, that everybody didn't says, happen. No, no, it, no, We're no, still no. small enough that people would know exactly. that it did not happen. So, you know, we're, we're, I think we're held fairly accountable. And exactly. I think we usually live up to that standard pretty well. And I think that speaks to most of the newspapers in Georgia when mm -hmm. we've got professional people well, trying to just gather the facts. I was going to tell you, as a reader of the progress, the first thing I always went to, and I hate to admit this, I'm an old lady, the obituaries, because mm -hmm. often you forget to check. You can call the number and get, but you have to sit on hold because they get mm -hmm. so many calls every day. But I would go to the obituary and then usually go to the want ads because my late husband, God love him, mm -hmm. loved to buy and sell stuff. He just loved it and he, he would, he, I would get the paper and he'd say, hand, hand me the classifieds while you're doing that. And right. so he would look at the yeah. classifieds, I would look at the obituaries. And then I love the social page. I love the wedding announcements. I love the things when you do a wedding announcement on Facebook, it's so impersonal. It's it's real in the progress, mm -hmm. and I love that. So, so those are my two favorite things. And then I loved when y'all started adding, and I'm I'm sitting here in this seat right here at ETC today, many many years later because you had a gentleman, Jeff Warren, who mm -hmm. was with you a for many many years. Yeah, he was with us. At at least a decade, he was an excellent feature writer. Mm -hmm. He came and visited our farm on Harris Road, and he gave me, he did an amazing article. I had just buried my husband of 25 years. I was a bit stressed, and he was such a great writer, and he just sat there on the porch with me, and we just chit-chatted and talked. He gave me the idea for the format of this program, he gave me the idea when, when I had the opportunity to do this that you can just sit and talk to people about their life. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do here at ETC. That's what you write about. You still have yeah. feature writers mm -hmm. like oh, yeah, Tim absolutely. Cavender. Uh, Larry. Or Larry that, that, Cavender. Yeah, Tim's his brother. <laughs> yeah, right, Tim's, yeah. Tim Santa. Yeah. But, but we do have those feature writers mm -hmm. who go out and just chit chat with neighbors. Yeah, absolutely. We've got one, and it probably take me too long to flip to the particular page this week. But to show you, we're still we still have that um, right here. I thought this was just a really neat story. It was just about a woman who had won the Coca-Cola Grand Prize sweepstake 60 years ago. Wow! And you know, and what made that such a great story is she talked about how that changed her. Like, oh yeah. 60, she said she was very young when she won it, and uh -huh. she said it just gave her confidence. Wow! And she's like, wow, I won this. I mean, it was just a pure random sweepstakes drawing, but how cool that, you is know, that? Looking back after 60 yeah. years, yeah. It, and we saw so we still we went out and talked to her and it made a great interview. I love it. now. Here's something that if you if you haven't bought a progress, you need to go buy you one. There are going to be free begonias for mothers at the farmers' day this week mm -hmm. at the farmers' market. Yeah. yeah. For Mother's Day, and and this is this is about your friends, your neighbors, local things mm -hmm. happening. We we try to be as local as we can be. We do mm -hmm. cover, we do include state news because I think mm -hmm. people need, mm -hmm. you know, like state political news. I am well aware is not, not our most popular section of the paper. It's not right. well read. We don't we, we spread it out, but I do think people need to know that. So we try to group in a little bit of things that are important that people need to know, as well as just interesting stories about mm -hmm. a lady who won a sweepstakes 60 years ago and how it changed her life and That's the fact so cool. you can get free begonias out at the farmer's market. Now we're going way back because I would have been married 45 years this year to J.S. Martin and T.J. Massey Jewelry mm -hmm. is where these came from. Really? Huh. This Isn't that crazy y'all? T.J. Massey Jewelry, Tommy Massey had a jewelry store and um, we that's where my wedding rings came from and I got exactly what I wanted he said what do you want and I told him and he said well Tommy will get it for us and Tommy did and that's you know that's that's it and looking back at this my when when Angela passed away one of the things that I had to deal with was piles and piles of memories and the progress was one of the, her most important memories. Mm -hmm. Every time her daughter was in the progress, excelling right. in something in school, every time she was drum major, every time she excelled at something in that, every time there was a band competition, Angela had all these progress. 
and that got me on a mission mm -hmm. to feature the the local news and and it is local news it's like we still on etc we air ball games that were seasons ago but i get a call from a grandparent who says oh my gosh my grandson has grown up and he's married and got kids and i loved getting to see him play right. we feature those and and that's the great thing about being able to push the buttons we can push here we can remind you of what your children have accomplished and we do it through a local that's what it's about. It's local news. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think every, all of the weekly newspapers in Georgia very much maintain that, that you know it's local, 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 yep. faces and names, faces and names. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and we got to have a good blend. I mean, you do need to report on what the county commission, city council is doing. Mm -hmm. You need mm -hmm. to have people informed about the quality of the schools in their um, community, but you also just need to have people informed like it yep. on the on the free begonias at the farmer's market type stuff and how the Dragons sports teams are doing and doing great. which students are winning awards. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah, absolutely. We, um, we try to always keep it local, always have a good local focus um, for the majority of the news. That we're I was looking at this and this is so funny. I knew Sheila Bowers for years and years and years. Jack's Restaurant. You mm -hmm. remember Jack's Restaurant on Main Street in Jasper. I was doing two jobs at that time I was working. I left a law firm in Atlanta, imagine this, boy what a life change, <laughs> and went to the townhouse restaurant, worked the breakfast shift, and then worked the evening shift at the Woodbridge Inn. I had two jobs there, and it, it was Jack's restaurant before it was the town, was it before or after it was the townhouse? I think it was before it was Jack's first, maybe? I, I do not know. I That's think. But anyway, I was sitting there one day, and I just saw a truck go by with a phone number on it. It was J.S. Martin in it, and I'd known him for years, but hadn't seen him in years, and I mm -hmm. picked up the phone, called him. The rest is history. <laughs> 45 years later, it's crazy. But, but local stuff. And, and these places, um, Greystone Cafe, where my friend Doreen Lee made the best hamburger in the world. I'm working on a new cookbook and she's a big part of it because she came here from Kankakee, Illinois, but she immediately became a part of Jasper. And the Greystone restaurant turned into the Yellow Bird. And at the Yellow Bird, she prepared dishes that I taught her to prepare in a Southern way and she taught me a bunch of fancy stuff. Right. So it's local stuff, y'all, and that's the coolest thing about it. It's just, this is local stuff. This is local stuff. I love it. This is, um, the, this one talks about Ben Franklin again, but do you remember when we had Super D Absolutely. on the corner? Yes, ma'am. And we would go to Super D and put our kids lay away for Christmas, mm -hmm. and, you know, that's what we did. That was a lifestyle we had. And now um, you've watched in the Edge Building, you still have your office, and y'all have upgraded that and done we, a lot of we stuff. We have. We've renovated yeah. our office, and we've never thought this would happen. We have got a Sharp Top Distillery, mm -hmm. uh, the, which makes uh, bourbon as well as uh, moonshine. Right. And, uh, That's and wild that in downtown Jasper. Mm -hmm. And we've got the... And my granddaddy went to jail for that. <laughs> I know that is, and it's right across from the jail. Um, Isn't that crazy? And we've got uh, the Pickens Arts and Cultural Alliance PACA, which puts on Art Walk, is also in the old mm -hmm. front part mm -hmm. of our office. And let's talk a little bit about Art Walk. When it, when it came about, was it to just bring recognition to downtown Jasper and the businesses? I think, so. that I think it was, was, it was a, an idea that came out of PACA. I was not involved in the mm -hmm. organizing of it, but yeah, I've seen it. It's really, a, very, really successful. Every and it's bit. two or three years old? Just no, no, this is, this, this is year two. It yeah. just started okay. last year. And okay. so it has, that's all the local artists. Um, show up and you know show their stuff in different stores and people mm -hmm. get to walk in they see the store they see the art it works well it's very nice i love event. tour of the old jail i toured it one night when i got stopped for speed <laughs> <laughs> i did not want to tour it again yeah. thank you <laughs> and you know what's so funny I, it was when uh, arthur uh, no, what was his name atkins had the laundromat there behind the graystone mm -hmm. and I said, oh gosh, I hope nobody will recognize my car sitting here at the jail as I'm getting my bond posted for speeding and oh, please don't let my mama know. Mama knew in five yeah. minutes. Mama knew in five. That's the other good thing about a small town. Everybody knows what kind of car you drive and everybody knows she got caught speeding. Yeah. <laughs> so now let's go to the progress today. Mm -hmm. Today, tell me a little bit about your staff. I love Angela. Okay. I think Angela is the greatest positivity. She's she's awesome. She is. She is. She is. Um, Been there 15 years? Uh, something like that. Yeah. Um, she is uh, our full-time reporter. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, 
myself, and then we've had Sherry Crow, who has been there. Actually, she has been there continually longer yes. than I have as our yes. office manager in charge of circulation, uh -huh. does ad sales, does, she does everything. She has done well. She and is, we have to say retiring, Martha Poole retired, your mm -hmm. brother's retired. Both my brother, I had two brothers that worked there, both mm -hmm. are retired, my mm -hmm. sister-in-law, uh, my mother, and then my wife works there. She mm -hmm. handles, she does some report and does um, billing. Your and does, wife actually came out, I think, I'm trying to remember, who came when we put up the yellow ribbons for David Collins' death when he was killed in Iraq? I can't remember who came out then, but but it was a, a female reporter, mm -hmm. and um, then Channel 11 came, Channel 5 came, and Channel 2 came, walked in our florist because yeah. they said, tell me about this. Well, it started in Gilmer County. A Gilmer County resident started it when um, Noah Harris was killed. And then they called us and asked, would we help with Noah's yellow ribbons? And wow. y'all have, we have a full page ad that the Progress did about that. Right. Because we wanted to honor all military. Mm -hmm. And that was the great thing about the Progress. During those horrible days, those bad days, those sad days, people could pick up the paper and see a picture of this young soldier who was killed. They could pick up the paper and read a story about him growing up in Pickens County. Right. That was so important. That was so important. And and then we, we went to our uh, representative for the state and got the road named the Sammy Collins, not Sammy Collins. Uh, David. Yeah, David Collins. Um, memorial. And and it, it was one of those things. The local paper covered all of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, we appreciated it. And people kept yeah. so many articles from that. And, and that, was, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. It is. Deal. It is. The, the people in the community are mm -hmm. ultimately what you know, our subject matter is every yep. week. Now, who owns, I'm, I'm looking at that where they're going to put the mm -hmm. restrooms. Did the city end up acquiring this property? Yeah, so they're going to do that all is, that? That is yeah. a city property, yeah. absolutely. And if y'all have, I'm kidding about the jail, y'all ought to go visit the jail. Have you been in it lately? Yeah, I, actually, oddly enough, I am on, their, I'm on their board of directors mm -hmm. over there at the Pickens mm -hmm. Historical Society, and we have very good tours. It's very interesting. It's yeah. always amazing how many people will come to the jail who've lived in the community a long time. It's like, you know, I've never been in never here before. Been. Yeah, so I'm I have, darn your, it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, who have been like, I used to walk by it all the time. It's, uh -huh. a, it's a really neat building. It's one of the, I mean, it, you can tell by looking at the exterior. It's mm -hmm. a historic building. It's beautiful. Now, what about the Kirby Quentin? The cabin is tell right. Me about it is on that. the same property. Right. It has been, um, it was moved, um, and I don't have my dates right in front of me. It was a Cherokee era cabin mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was it don't know exactly who was living there could have been um cherokee or it could have been mm -hmm. settlers that were in the cherokee was it the nation talking rock area it was actually on dunbean hill oh, oh. and then it first was moved wow. to the campus of jasper elementary where mm -hmm. i remember that the, for the vice principal at the time tom mm -hmm. quentin mm -hmm. would use the cabin as a learning opportunity I remember and then that. Mm -hmm. The school expanded and we moved the cabin, was moved to beside the old jail. It makes sense. You can tour both mm -hmm. the same place. It's mm -hmm. really neat for people to see inside there. Mm -hmm. so. You know, have you been to the Chief Van House? I have. Over, that, that to me, every school ought to load their kids mm -hmm. up and take them to the Chief Van House. Well, once, a, once a year we have all the students from one of the schools come through the jail and cabin. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we I do, think that's important. Yeah, we do get every, it would be every student, because it's one of like the middle, I think it's the middle school that once a year comes through there. Right, right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Historical Society and what's going on. What's being preserved in, in Jasper that's really important to you? Well, right now, unfortunately, the only thing that is preserved or being preserved is the old jail and the Kirby cabin, at mm -hmm. least by our work. Now, the old, mm -hmm. the Tate Depot is handled by, um, through the, the, I always get the name wrong, and I'm going to Marble Valley. Marble Valley Friends, Friends yes, yes. Um, is handles the the Tate Depot as well as the county. That has now got a train set up in there, so mm -hmm. um, that is being preserved. But outside of that, not not a lot. We is not as much historic preservation as there should be. Well, you know, I was looking at this article, the Sharp Top Mountain Arts and Crafts Association, and, and they were talking about the Sassafras Riding too. Mm -hmm. And tell me, what do you know the history of the house now? Where the is it the Extension County Extension the county Office extension. is there? Tell me about that building. Um, 
I know it was the library. It when was, I was the library. When I was, yes, when I was a yes. kid, it was the county library. And, and didn't Tom Quentin do something in there once upon a time? I remember going there and talking to him, but possibly. I can't remember what. Um, it was Maybe Shortop he was Arts Association for a long time. I um, bet he was there speaking. He might have been. I bet he was there speaking. And yeah. I, I have drawn that reference to Sharp, Sharp Top Arts that it was a volunteer organization that did great, mm -hmm. a lot of good things for the arts, but. It did not get enough volunteers and not get enough donations and now it is just no not, longer there it is no yeah, longer there yeah wow and wow. so we you know do need to keep that in mind with other of our nonprofits and community organizations um stay like, involved yeah absolutely. i think staying need, involved need. is very very important now i'm going to make y'all laugh because you can get um this is this is so funny when we look at the prices of things i picked up a progress this morning that i didn't bring the it was a newspaper article. Mm -hmm. Chicken was 38 cents a pound. That has, has your sweet wife been to the grocery store lately? I, I know it is going up a lot. <laughs> it's not 38 cents a pound. I am sure. It's not, it's not. It is so crazy how we're changing, but we have a saying in ball ground, and this is, my bestie came up with this, we are preserving the past and embracing the future. And I think that is definitely what the Pickens County Progress does. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we run, um, a lot because I do like for especially people moving up here I do mm -hmm. like to give enough I mean they're never gonna pick up a paper if it's all history but I do mm -hmm. like to you know even if it's not practically important it mm -hmm. is I think there's some reason they need to know like mm -hmm. oh this mm -hmm. was you know this I want to look at, at point. okay the yeah. editor as the editor tell me what you tell me what you write about tell me some of the things um, that interest you well I also editor reporter I go out i swap up with Angela to cover city meetings, county mm -hmm. meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, we have we have some excellent uh, contributors and freelancers who also go out. We don't, mm -hmm. we use, um, as you mentioned earlier, Larry Cavender is mm -hmm. pretty regular, mm -hmm. Max Kaler is pretty regular. We've mm -hmm. got um, a um, young college age, um, Eli Galligan has, mm -hmm. will be with us interning all summer. He also mm -hmm. already contributes. We've got a, um, a Kevin Rauda has started. So we've got several freelancers we draw from on an occasional mm -hmm. basis. Well, I have to read this, and, and y'all, you gotta go by your progress, if nothing else, to keep this. Mother knows best. This sounds like my mother wrote it. <laughs> best advice from mothers. In honor of Mother's Day on Sunday, May the 14th, we take a look at some of the best known momisms that have been handed down through the ages. Soap is cheap. There's no excuse for being dirty. God, that sounds like my <laughs> granny. Money may buy happiness, but it sure can make life easy. Can it sure money may not buy happiness, but it sure can make life easier and less stressful. I agree with that. Be a credit to your community, and the progress has certainly been a credit oh, to well, the thank community. You. Always put on some lipstick; it will make you feel good. Y'all don't know how funny that is. I never. If I'm in surgery, honey, I got on <laughs> lipstick. <laughs> And this is one that I have had preached to me and preached to me, show me who your friends are, and then I will show you who you are. Because that, you choose friends by who you associate. Your guilty of association, mm -hmm. as my mama used to say. Be kind and love your sisters and brothers, for after your father and I are gone, you will need each other. How precious, how precious. Now, who chose to, I'm not going to read all of it, y'all are going to have to buy the progress right. to get it, but this is, it's Mother's Day week, and mothers, your mother being one of those, can you say your mom was a strong woman? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think strong women, I think Southern women, number one, we have to be strong. We're up against some elements, mm -hmm. and, and we have to be strong. But I love that it's Mother's Day and we are celebrating. We are celebrating the history of your mother's family. We are celebrating the history and preserving the past, but embracing the future. And so when you get letters to ed editors, I, I used to get tickled reading them because I read one on right. the air a while back that my daughter wrote. My daughter was a smoker. Mm -hmm. And she wrote an article about the pay in the progress that y'all published, and I read it a few weeks ago. She didn't smoke, but she hated when mom smoked and rolled up the window and have two kids in a car seat right. behind them. Well, Angela wrote this, and I thought it was very controversial, and y'all published it. And we got so many phone calls, and people said, way to go. I'm so glad you brought that up. I got behind somebody at the Dairy Queen the other day, and they had the windows rolled up and two kids in there and two moms chain smoking. I'm so glad the Progress published that. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Because it doesn't have to, everybody doesn't have to agree to it. It's a letter to the editor. 
Now, have you ever had anything later to the editor that you said, oh, I can't publish that? Oh, absolutely. Yes, um, yes. You know, in general, I try to be absolutely as open those letters to the editor as I can. I usually mm -hmm. look at them as this libelous mm -hmm. because the newspaper, even, you know, I've had people over the years be like, well, it's got my name on it. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, it doesn't matter. It's in mm -hmm. our newspaper. So right. when it comes time to go to court, they're going you to be they're probably yeah. more interesting in us than in you. Yeah. But um, yeah. in general, and I like, um, I publish those, um, I do not like to let my opinion, or I don't let my opinion of whether oh, I agree, disagree, has mm -hmm. no bearing on it, mm -hmm. because I wouldn't want a newspaper that it was all like this. Right. Everything in there is Dan Poole's opinion. Right. I mean, I, I, right. that would be a dangerous thing yeah, to have. That so would not be good. Send the, the ones we don't usually run, I always like to, is if someone has gone to a local business mm -hmm. and had a bad experience, right. and don't they do want that. to write, and it's like, no, that's just no. not what a letter to the no. editor is for. No. That's not, no. the, not the way to resolve that issue. So, Well, I got tickled because the, the one that Angela wrote was pretty long, and y'all did it, and, and I, I found it in her drawer mm -hmm. at her house, and I said, oh my gosh, and I read it on the air here not too long ago. But, but I like that because it is, it is open reporting. Now, you do the sheriff's beat every week. Mm -hmm. And have you seen changes in what's happening in Pickens County as we grow? You know, I, I, I hate to say this because I don't want to jinx this in some way. It, I, I think it says a lot about the safety of our community. Mm -hmm. If you look over what we have mm -hmm. in our sheriff's beat, not that bad stuff does not happen, not that there is not crime that may mm -hmm. happen, mm -hmm. but you do not see a lot of like assault, mm -hmm. uh, no. robberies, stranger no. on stranger crime. No. So I, I hate to say no, I have not seen a change. There is obviously some and it is small. I think but drugs are the one thing we've all that, that seen. Is, that yes. is a constant. Yes. That yes. is absolutely yes. a constant. Yeah. I have pointed out, and they are definitely bad. They destroy lives. Mm -hmm. But we have not seen a lot of drug. We've not, as you hear in other places, drug-related violence. Mm -hmm. That's good. At, at least, you know, like stranger on stranger. Well, and see, growing up in Atlanta and Orlando, we grew up in the city. And so when we came, I, I literally came to Jasper to raise my child because I didn't want her to grow up in the city. Right. Because at that time, 52 years ago, it was changing then. It was becoming more criminalized and, and dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was talking to you before we came on the air. When the event happened in Texas last week, it made me even look differently at going into Canton, Georgia. Right. which made me feel sad for myself and for everybody else because if you're in a big shopping plaza and you realize that the day before in a strip shopping plaza some crazy person killed eight people you just ha or seven you just have to stop and it it gives you kind of cold chills and you think about it but we are so blessed from from Cherokee County to Pickens County to Gilmer County to Fannin County to Turtletown, Tennessee, we are so blessed because we seem to live in an area well, that is just good. I, I, absolutely, at this at this point, we yeah. it's very good. I always hate to say that. Jinx it, we ain't gonna jinx it. We ain't gonna jinx it. We ain't gonna jinx it. Well, I want to remind y'all if you're doing something and it's interesting, if you're uh, remodeling a historical house and if you're well, let's talk a little bit about our crossbearer that Angela came down to do a story about, mm -hmm. Matthew. Yeah. That Uncle Gene called and said, um, hey, would you like to come and interview this guy? And I said, absolutely. And he said, okay, I'm calling the progress. And I said, that's great. <clears throat> so y'all did a story about it and we did a video about it. And it was ball ground and, you know, and the progress covered it. I like that y'all kind of stepped over the boundary and came down to, to Cherokee well, County. We cover, we yeah. cover ball ground. Um, they are uh, clearly in Cherokee. We're part of y'all. Yeah, We're part I, I of y'all. I think perhaps Ball Ground maybe has more in common with the Pickens to the north mm -hmm. than the rest of Cherokee. Maybe, right. maybe not. Uh, Absolutely. But we do cover it. We have a lot. We send a lot of papers into Ball Ground. Mm -hmm. the, I love that. Uh, I love that. Ball Ground, that. Ground addresses. And the Ball Ground address extends you know, over to Yellow Creek Road right. in some places. Right. So we, we are... We mail quite a few papers. I love that. Now, speaking of mailing a paper, um, if you want a progress, how do they subscribe to your paper? Ah, glad you asked. Uh, probably, I, I actually think the easiest way is to just call our office. Mm -hmm. You can certainly do it online, and not a lot of people prefer, but we also... 
I like people a, that pick up the we, phone. And we do. We, oddly enough, people think this is strange. We do not have any type of answering machine. Yeah. I mean, you call the progress. You answer the we, phone. We, we answer I the phone. When you, when you call us, we answer. I, mean, <laughs> I love uh, it. I love it. And I love um, it. so you can call, it, call our office. You can certainly subscribe, pickingsprogress.com, uh, and mm -hmm. we're... Um, could take a subscription that away. They are in all the convenience stores. They right. are um, most of the grocery or all the grocery stores, most of the convenience stores. Mm -hmm. You can do that. We um, um, like Wednesday at what time do people start okay, this walking is, this in is your where door? Thing, it gets kind of interesting. We actually, you know, like newspapers, um, our print. We do not sell as many print copies as we used to, but we now sell you. We can sell you a print copy. We can sell you an e edition. You can mm -hmm. buy a three day. If you just want to read one story, you can buy a three-day pass for a buck online. I know it's aggravating to get a wow. credit card out to just put in one dollar a purchase. Oh, but I you love can, that. But if you were in um, two counties away, that makes it an easy way for mm -hmm. somebody around the world to get mm -hmm. just one copy of the progress. Mm -hmm. um, and as well as we've got our public website, which we don't put all of our news on that exactly. because that would be giving yeah. it away. And yep. I don't see grocery stores giving away food, so we're nope. not giving all of our nope. stories away. But you can subscribe any of those ways ways are easy. Uh, mm -hmm. we, um, the e-edition is available at 5 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. pops up um, and you can start at beginsprogress.com and get that. We start sending them to the stores um, usually 930. We are starting to get in some of the stores. We mm -hmm. should have them in all of the stores in the Pickens area by noon. Mm -hmm. And then they go into the mail. They always go in the mail Wednesday morning at the Jasper Post Office. We have a great relationship. Jasper Post Office mm -hmm. works well to make sure our papers are out there. Right. Um, people who are out of town, we'll start getting them later in the week, just depending on how quick the mail gets mm -hmm. to them. Well, let me tell you what else they've got. See this? They got a recipe by me weekly now. So this is going to be fun. I've had fun choosing the first few. The, the first one is excellent. Yeah, the first one it, it's with. just been fun. And it started, I was telling you the story of how I made peach cobbler at the Woodbridge Inn. I designed it, I created it. That recipe came because Willie Cisnero hired me as a baker for $125 a week as the baker and then another $50 a week as the lead waitress, but right. I got tips. So it was great. And that's how I met Joe Kelly McCutcheon. Yeah. We want to go back to the progress and, and the history with Burnt Mountain Center. They okay. are celebrating 50 years. They are celebrating, yeah. or, or 26, 50 years. They are celebrating But 50 they years. did it 35 years for y'all. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, let me, of course, I'm going to touch on your recipe. Because mm -hmm. what I liked about it, and I liked right off the start, is if you want a recipe for peach cobbler, you can find it. A, a million. million online. Yes. But if you want the recipe for the Woodbridge Inn peach cobbler that was served in the 70s, 70s and, 80s, and 90s, and 80s, yes. And you also get the story. I mean, that's so yeah. much of like about food. It's not yeah. just eating it, yep. oh, that tastes good. It's like, oh, yep. here's the history of this yes. particular recipe. Yes. And that's what you're bringing with these recipes, and we're excited to have yeah. them. Yeah, it's uh, going to be cool. Yeah, it's going to be really cool, and thank uh, you for giving me that opportunity. Uh, let's go back to the Bart Mountain Center. Yes, okay, they, 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 were, they were a part of us um, for 35 years. Mm -hmm. What they did is, and at the progress up until middle, no, actually late 80s, we mm -hmm. printed. This paper mm -hmm. was printed at, in the Edge Building. Right, In right. the warehouse, which is now Sharp Top Distilling. Mm -hmm. We had a full press. We did all of our own printing. That's why it was black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, you need more units. You need more space mm -hmm. to print color. Um, and at that point, the progress would come out in two sections, and you would have whatever of the preprint inserts mm -hmm. that had to go in that week. And we um, would use the Burnt Mountain Center, and they would bring a crew over on print day. Who and, looked forward to and it. And they Gosh, did. I mean, it, it. It, was, it was their job. And I've yes. said this before. If everybody brought the same enthusiasm to any job that those people brought to inserting the Pickens Progress, and they would sit there until they had all of these. They'd put one in. Then they would flip it open and put in the stack of the preprints that were already done. And we would um, address them and go on it. And they had... You know, their quality control was excellent. They mm -hmm. usually, mm -hmm. there were always mistakes, they always happen, but you usually <coughs> got a front section and a sports section. Now, we did it for 35 years. We would give an empl we would give a employee of the month award to the Burnt Mountain Center. Oh, Those people it. were, and w we enjoyed them. It was a great relationship. So you're like, well, why did y'all quit using them? Well, mm -hmm. that would be a case where technology just wouldn't allow it. Mm -hmm. Evil, in case you were, 
a home, you buy them in the stores, you, the address goes right here in this mm -hmm. box. Mm -hmm. Back in this day, you printed labels. The mm -hmm. labels were put on that. the paper. Yes, I remember now, that. Now the address goes directly on to the print product. Mm -hmm. they, it goes inkjet. There is no label anymore. Mm -hmm. It is printed mm -hmm. straight there. So when we get the progresses, in ja our printer is in Rome. We mm -hmm. print with, uh, have, a, have printed with Rome since um, the late 80s. Mm -hmm. And that, they were actually in Calhoun first, and they moved to Rome, consolidated, and have one of the finest print facilities in Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, but the papers come already addressed mm -hmm. in bundles. They're also already, they call it walk sequenced for the post office. They're in order, so somebody driving down the road, hopefully if they So it's maintain. really technically managed. So, yeah, so yeah. what we would have to do is cut open the walk sequence papers yeah. and then have the Burt Mountain Center insert yeah. all this, yeah. then fold them back up and keep them all in the right order. Yeah, and that we would just be tough. Yeah, we just yeah. cannot do that. That would be tough. So, well, to Burnt Mountain Center, we say congratulations on your 50th anniversary. I will be there, and I hope the progress oh, will absolutely. be covering we, we it. Have I'm sure already, the progress will be covering We have already it. been in touch yeah. with them, and we've yeah. already discussed some yeah. special things we're going to do because yeah. we have 35 years um, relationship with them, and we are we, right. you know, excited for them. Well, because it is Mother's Day weekend, and I'm so thankful that, yes, my mother had melanoma. Yes, I've got it, but we're going to kick it in the head real quick, real, real fast. It's going to be gone. I hope it never comes back. We're going to share a song that Dwight Sanford wrote the day he lay his mom to rest, Jesus Called. And we're going to show some of your photos. It won't get all of them in, but we're going to show some of them. So happy, happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you and to the progress. Keep on doing yeah. what you're well, doing. Well, thank you. Look forward to it, and, and thank you for being here today. Well, thank you for having us. All right, we'll see you again soon, y'all. Only on ATC, you sit tight and listen to this music, and you might see a picture of yourself.
she used to leave And if someone needs a friend Just to sit and talk with them She'll answer every call Even if it's 3 a.m. Yes, I'll bet they're singing in heaven tonight They're gathered in on heaven's shining shore I know the angels are filled with delight And mom won't be I'll bet they're singing in heaven tonight Cause Jesus just called a fine one home Yeah, Jesus sure called a fine